All right, hi Year 12, this is Mr. Lim here again, and this is uh, another video on changes to one of the chemical species when the system's at equilibrium. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to be learning quite a bit here. Okay, so we're going to be discussing how, okay, when it's at equilibrium, then you make a change of you've changed, you've added or you've removed a single species in that equilibrium. Okay, we're going to be discussing uh, whether the reaction quotient or the equilibrium constant is affected. And this will be the same structure for all of the different changes, okay? How the forward and reverse rates of reaction immediately change, okay? In terms of collision theory, we're not even gonna to touch LCP. Um, determine the net rate of reaction, okay? So that's, remember, that's the overall rate of reaction, which one is greater than the other, which, one, which way the reaction has shifted or which way um, it's been favored. Okay, so that's just different language to say the net reaction again. And then the final changes in rates and yield. Okay, so it's important to see that we had an immediate change and a final change, and they are going to be uh, different all the same, but you have to know both of them. All right, so that's what we're going to be going through. So let's move on. All right, so let's have a think. Remember, we've just added or removed something from the equilibrium, okay? Does it affect the equilibrium constant or the reaction quotient? Does it affect the equilibrium constant or the reaction quotient? Uh, if you remember from the equilibrium constant video, the only thing that affects equilibrium constant is the temperature, which just means that we're going to change the reaction quotient. Okay, so remember, the reaction quotient is the same thing as the equilibrium constant. It's just, uh, it can be at not equilibrium or equilibrium. So if you change one of the concentrations, you change uh, the values within that expression, and therefore that value uh, is going to change, and that's the reaction quotient that changes. All right, and then the system is no longer in equilibrium, which means that one of the reactions is going to go faster than the other for a little while. Okay, so let's move on. How does it affect equilibrium? Okay, so... You have to describe how both the forward and the reverse reaction rates immediately change in terms of collision theory, okay? So, remember you can add or remove a chemical species, uh, a species in there, so this is what's going to happen. When exchanging, uh, explaining a change in concentration, you need to state the changes to the rates of forward and reverse, okay? So, you need to state the change to both the forward and reverse, not just to the one that changes. Okay, increases in concentration always increase the rate of reaction of the reaction that has those substances as reactants. Okay, so um, that's a bit wordy, but effectively, if you increase the reactants, then you're going to increase the forward rate of reaction because increasing the reactants, uh, those are the reactants of the forward reaction. But if you increase the products, you're going to increase the reverse rate of reaction because the products are the reactants of the reverse reaction, all right? And it kind of just makes sense. If you add more of the stuff, you're gonna have more frequent collisions, okay? So more frequent collisions. Remember the word frequent there. If you have more frequent collisions, that's going to lead to more frequent successful collision, okay? So that is really explaining it in terms of collision theory, okay? And if you decrease it, it's the opposite, blah, blah, blah. All right, so let's have a look at... Oh, well, so we actually just said that. Um, uh, you know, how forward and reverse reaction rates immediately change in terms of collision theory. Again, change in frequency of collisions, and therefore the change in frequency of successful collisions. Change in concentration of one substance does not affect the opposite reaction, okay? So if you change the concentration of one of the substances, like the reactants or the products, you're not going to affect the other rate of reaction, okay? And that must be stated in your explanation. Let's go through a couple of graphs to kind of help you explain that, okay? To see what's happening here. So see here on the left-hand side, we're just dealing with the left-hand side for now, this side, okay? So, uh, in this system here, it was initially at equilibrium. How do we know? Because all the concentrations doesn't change, the forward rate of reaction doesn't change. So these two up and down graphs are linked to each other. All right, then all of a sudden I add in 
sum of the reactant over here. And you notice that the other two don't change at that point in time. All right, since I've added some reactants, the forward rate of reaction is going to increase. The forward rate of reaction increases. What happens to the concentration of the products? Nothing, so therefore the reverse rate of reaction doesn't change at that point in time. Okay, at that point in time. So the idea is that when you change the concentration of something, you're going to change the rate of reaction of one of them, and one of them is going to change, either go up or down. After that point in time, that rate of reaction is going to be going for faster than the other, right? So we'll go through over this later on, but this is going to be a net forward rate of reaction, okay? And we're going to say that it's favored, uh, the forward is favored or it shifts to the right, but we'll go through that later, all right? So at that point in time, the forward rate of reaction is going faster than the reverse rate of reaction, which will consume the reactants, okay? which will consume the reactants. Those reactants are gonna be consumed because the forward rate is going faster than the reverse rate of reaction and it's gonna make products. And then after a little while, it's gonna reestablish equilibrium around there and continue on at equilibrium. Okay, now let's have a look at the right-hand side. Okay, uh, here we have another situation, but instead of we're adding something, we're now removing something. So we're removing some of the products. If you remove some of the products, you're going to reduce the reverse rate of reaction because there's less frequent collisions and therefore there's less frequent collisions, uh, successful collision between the products. And so therefore you're going to reduce that rate of reaction. Reducing that rate of reaction means that there is a net forward reaction, right? If there's a net forward reaction, the reactants are going to be consumed and the products are going to be produced until they hit equilibrium again, okay? So that's the idea that you have a net forward rate of reaction, even though the forward rate of reaction hasn't changed. You have a, still have a net forward reaction because the reverse reaction changed. And we're gonna go through all of those things in the next couple of slides and stuff. All right, so uh, determine the net reaction. Okay, so remember, one of the reactants will change. One of the reactions is gonna change. It's gonna go up or down. The other has remained the same. You need to use your brain to work out which one now has the net rate of reaction. Okay, it's whichever one is higher after the change. Now, the change could be an increase, it could be a decrease, all right? So it could be the one that increased, it could be the one that stayed the same. In this case on the left, in this case here, right, the one that is favored or is the net reaction is the one that increased. All right. However, on the right hand side, the one that is the net reaction is the one that stayed the same because you have to think about what's occurred and therefore work out what the net rate of reaction is. All right. Same thing with the direction that it's shifted. Okay. You use the net reaction to work out which way it's shifted. So if it's the net reverse rate of reaction, it re the reaction shifts to the left. If it's a net forward reaction, it shifts to the right. Okay. The net reaction is the reaction that is favored. However, it is, the, it is not, uh, saying it is not the same as saying the net reaction. Okay, so you can't just, in your explanation, you can't just say, oh, it shifted to the left without saying that there is a net reaction or a net reverse rate of reaction. Okay, you can't just say it's just shifted to the left. Okay, that's not gonna be enough in your explanation. All right, um, then finally, we're gonna determine the final changes in rates and yields. Okay, so final change as opposed to initial change. So the final change of rate of reaction will follow from on the change in concentration. Okay, so the final change in rate of reaction will follow on from the change in concentration, i.e. an increase in concentration will always end up with both rates of reactions increasing and vice versa. All right, so let's go back to our diagrams. Where'd they go? There they are. All right, so if you have here on the left-hand side an, an increase, increase in concentration, 
that means that leads to a increase rate of reaction from forward. But overall, at the end, the final rate of reaction, both have increased. Both have increased. So increased concentration means both rate of reactions increase. Let's have a look at V1 on the right-hand side. You have a decrease in concentration, okay? Which means that that led to a drop in the reverse rate of reaction, decrease in the reverse rate of reaction, which leads to both rates of reaction decreasing. Okay, so the idea is that the decrease in concentration creates that's, or makes both rates of reaction decrease, and therefore, um, even though the forward was favoured, it still decreased at the end. Okay, so that's the kind of the important the idea that you need to be able to look at this in, t in its entirety and work out. Okay, what is it asking me? Is it asking me, is it favored? Is it asking me the net re reaction? Or is it asking me the immediate change? Is it asking me the final change? And then you have to answer it appropriately. Okay. Um, so that is that. Okay. Then we can also talk about the yield. All right. The final yield of the various substances will depend on the net rate of reaction. Okay. Because you haven't changed the volume, uh, whatever you've produced more of, you're going to have more of. Okay, so net forward rate of reaction, you're going to have more products and less reactants. Net reverse rate of reaction, more products, uh, more reactants, less products. Okay, but you can have a look at these diagrams and work out whether there's a change in the yield. All right. Um, just one more extra thing to note is that when we have a increase here, all right, there's always going to be a little bit of an increase in yield here, okay? You're not going to have this go down more than it went up, all right? It can't, uh, it, the math just doesn't work, all right? So you have an increase in yield of the one that changed, right? Or a decrease in yield of the one that changed, okay? There's always going to be that, even though it goes back up, there's always going to be that little bit of decrease in yield. Okay, so there's that one there. Uh, and then all the others you can work out because those are fairly straightforward from where they started out and where they finished up. Okay, so, um, so this is a lot of stuff to go through. Uh, there will be lots of questions on it and we will be going through this in class. So if you don't get it, there will be opportunities to ask, and we're going to spend quite a bit of time on this one so that if we get this one right, we'll be able to get all the others right when we go through those. All right, that's it. Adios.